to me, and I get so excited over this, but serving somebody else is love. When you can say, hey, let me help you. That is the highest form of love on this entire earth. And that translates into sales when we're like, okay, I know I can help you. Here's my offer. If you want it, great. If you don't want it, that's also okay. No pressure. I'm here to help you. Welcome to the Mompreneur Life Remix podcast, where you will learn how to remix your mompreneur life so that you can win at work without losing yourself in the process. Hi, my name is Martine Williams, and I am your host and CEO, your chief encouragement officer. And this podcast is your one-stop shop to creating a burnout-proof life and business and elevating your clarity, confidence, and courage. Friends, it's time to say goodbye to being the yes girl and hello to creating healthy boundaries, healthy mindsets, and healthy habits. Your next breakthrough starts here. This is the Mom Her Life Remix podcast. Let's do this. Hey friends, happy Thursday. I am excited about today's episode today. If you have ever thought to yourself, if you have your own business, we have to make sales, right? We have to make offers. But if you've ever had the thought of well, everyone thinks that I'm pushy or I have to be pushy to talk about my business, or I don't want to be that, you know, what we think of sales as a sleazy car salesman. Like if you've had any of those thoughts or doubts, which I have, and I've overcome them, this episode is for you. So my guest today, my turquoise talk guest today is Sienna Kaposhki, and she is a three-time multi-six figure Christian visibility and sales business coach. Uh, she teaches women how to grow and scale their businesses using potent marketing and sales tactics tactics, and by removing limiting beliefs that are holding them back. And those are limiting beliefs that you have about sales. And one of the things that she talks about is sales. We talk about sales as service, right? But sales is love. And it's actually an exchange of that love. And I love her her beliefs about that and her mindset about that. And it's really going to help you to overcome some of those thoughts that maybe you have about sales. So if you're ready to shift your mindset on this and learn a little bit more about sales and how to do sales, um, this episode is for you. So grab your pen and your paper or pop those earbuds in and let's dive in. Welcome back, friends. I'm excited for today's Turquoise Talk guest, Sienna. So thank you so much, Sienna, for coming on the show. I can't wait to hear just more about you. I think stories of entrepreneurs is just, they're just also inspiring. And one of the reasons I love having a podcast is being able to meet new people uh, in this space and also introduce my audience to them so they can be inspired by your story. So thank you for taking the time to come on today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And I love your turquoise wall behind you. (laughs) Thank you. That is my signature color. It's a happy color, isn't it? That is so funny. (laughs) This room, my office actually used to be my son's nursery. Um, So when he was born, I painted it this color and um, we switched and uh, I have not changed it since. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it looks great behind you. So there you go. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about you, your story, um, you know, your family and how you, you know, caught into this amazing world of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So I'm a mama. I have a two and a half year old son, which I cannot believe he's already that age. Um, And I'm a military spouse. My husband serves in the active, uh, sorry, my husband is active duty um, and serves in the U.S. Navy. So we are, um, yeah, it's just, it's a very interesting, but how I got into entrepreneurship really started about five years ago. And I was working this job that I thought was my dream job. Like it was the job that I really, really wanted. I knew it would help me to break into my career. And I got a job as a digital campaign specialist at a television and radio station. And I was so excited that this was my first real career move after college. And once that happened and I got the job, everything went south. The job wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was miserable. It was very toxic. I had an extremely hard time with my team members. And 
everything just went south. Everything that I thought was going to be rainbows and sunshine and all this great stuff just ended up being really, really terrible. And so I only spent seven months in this job. And I remember closer to the end of me giving in my two week notice, I remember just feeling so defeated. Like I was so miserable that most days I would cry going to work or I would have to listen to a podcast just to get me to like lift my spirits to go inside the building or there were so many things I was trying to do to make myself feel at peace to go to work and that's why I knew this isn't working and so one day during my lunch break I found plane tickets to Barcelona and it was $200 from where I lived in Jacksonville Florida at the time to Barcelona. And I was like, this is a steal, like $200. Is completely <laughs> I'm running um, away. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm going, I went for two weeks. I told my boss, I was like, listen, I'm leaving next week to go to Barcelona. And she's like, you're going where? I'm like, listen, I just bought my ticket <laughs> on my lunch break next week. I'm leaving. And the company has like an unlimited PTO policy. So it all works out. So I went to Barcelona and I stayed at this party hostel. And so like my room was upstairs and underneath was like basically a club. And so every night I was going, I was meeting all these people and it was fun. And then one night I decided this is not really for me. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I needed to go get some fresh air. So I went for a walk and this is really where my entrepreneurship journey started. It was on this walk. It was 10 o'clock at night, which anyone listening, I do not recommend going on a walk in a foreign country at 10 o'clock at night by yourself. By yourself. <laughs> as yeah, a female was, too, you right, know, as a woman. Yeah, exactly. I was a hundred percent by myself. And so I just kept walking and walking and walking. And I got to this place where I was looking at the pier and I was looking at all the boats and the water and everything. And I just started crying. I could not stop crying. And in that moment, I said to myself, I need to really go all in on myself. It's time for me to give my two week notice at my job. And it's time for me to move on with my life. And that is when I started my business. I got back to work. I gave in my two week notice. I was fired for giving in a two week notice, which was uh, ironic in and of itself. And I got home and I had bills to pay. And I said, I need to do something. Um, And I started a company called Your Life Travel Club, where I took women on group trips all around the world. And it was really fun until COVID hit in 2020. And it caused the business to completely shut down. And once the business shut down, I decided to turn that business into a podcast. And I interviewed all of these people about their crazy travel stories And that podcast made a lot of money. And then um, trying to do like a long story short here in 2021, I got pregnant with my son and I was diagnosed with a condition called hyperemesis gravidarum. Um, If anyone isn't familiar with that, it is a condition that causes a pregnant woman to vomit uncontrollably. Um, and it only affects 2% of pregnant women in the entire world, according wow. to stats. I don't know how true that is, but according to what I've seen. Um, and so I was vomiting 120 times a day for nine months straight. Whoa. I, yeah, it was a lot. And I was hospitalized over 13 times in my pregnancy and my body started to go into organ failure. And all of that after my son was born and I got better about one month after my son was born, um, I started doing what I'm doing now. And so it's been (laughs) fun. And now he's two and a half years old and it's been a journey, but it all really started at that pivotal moment in Barcelona when I just realized I needed to make a change for myself. I mean, there's so much more to all of those stories. I know (laughs) you need to be like traveling the world if you're not telling stories, because you're really like, I was totally like hanging on every word, like what's going to happen next? (laughs) The power of story, right? Um, And entrepreneurship, but there's so many things I love about what you said. And I know there's women who are listening right now. And I really think ever since COVID. And I hate, you know, you hate to even keep bringing that up, but it is, has been such a pivotal moment for a lot of people that, you know, in those moments where life happens, whether it was the pregnancy or the moment when you were in Barcelona and you kind of had that moment, um, I think for a lot of people, it was COVID, right? Whether either they got really sick, that's part of my story, or um, had a family member that got sick, it just kind of brings you to this place where you're asking yourself the question, am I doing what I'm really supposed to be doing? 
Am I right. where I'm supposed to be? Am I doing the work that I'm called to do? And you had that moment and there are someone who's listening right now and they have that feeling, but they're afraid to take the first step. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like, I mean, again, it sounds like for someone looking from the outside in, like you just took the jump, right? But I'm sure there yeah. was thoughts you had, reservations that you had, doubts that you had that you kind of had to work through and maybe you worked through them faster than some some other people. But I'd love for you to kind of speak to that because I do think there's still, you know, four years oh. later, post COVID that people are, women especially are still feeling that nudge. Like there's something else, but I'm afraid to take that step. Yeah, I would be honest. I think back then at that point of time of my life, I was still so very young. I wasn't married. I didn't have a family. I didn't have any responsibilities. And so for me, yes, I had bills to pay and I did live by myself at that point, but it wasn't a serious situation. I always knew that my parents were going to be able to pay those bills for me in the event that I quit my job. Um, And so for a lot of women listening, the time of life that I was in is very different from the time of life that I'm in today. And so today, um, if I had to do that all over (laughs) again, I might have a different kind of reservation, right? Like I'm a mom now, I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. And while my husband does have an awesome career, he's been in the military for over 10 years. It just isn't that wouldn't be something I would be able to just do right away. Um, And so some of the thoughts that I would have are, what does this look like? Can I work on mentorship, right? Like, can I, what kind of support can I get to make that jump? I don't think I would have made that jump given the fact that I have a child um, and more responsibilities at this point of my life. But back then it was so easy. It was really easy. And not to say that there weren't any reservations, because like you said, there were still some things that came up in the back of my mind. Yes, I could have gone home to my parents, but at the end of the day, I did still have bills. I had my car that needed to be paid. I had my apartment that I had rent that I have to pay, um, insurance. There's all of these things. And so for me, I just knew in my heart, I could not stay where I was. I was so miserable that I started to get chest pains. I was becoming very sick from my job. My boss would message me at like midnight, one, two, three o'clock in the morning. And every time I would ask her, Hey, do you mind just like scheduling this email instead of like sending it to me at like two or three o'clock in the morning? She would tell me, no, that's not her problem. And that's my, and so like, all of the amount of toxicity that was in that environment, it just really pushed me. And now it took me three months before I made the jump. But I think like, if you are someone who's thinking about making that jump, you're not happy in your workplace, isolate yourself. And even if you can't like fully isolate yourself by going out of the country on your own, (laughs) the way that I did, right? (laughs) Because that's a whole different situation. Um, try to find like a day, go maybe escape, go to the park. If you have kids, have your husband, watch the kids or get a babysitter if you need to and go somewhere with a journal in your hand and go maybe to a coffee shop and write down all of your thoughts, write down your pros, write down your cons, write down your support system. What can you do to make money? And I will say mothers, especially mothers, we're the most resourceful people on the planet. Yes. You have bills that are coming up and you have a child, you're going to get scrappy and figure it out. And you're still going to be able to build a business. So I would say like really rely on that intuition as well as a, as a mother. Yeah. 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 It's so good. Thank you for being honest and vulnerable Uh and sharing. Like it probably would be a, you know, very different, but you still took a step, right? So everyone has a next step and everyone has a hundred percent responsibility for that next step. And I do think when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change, that's when we make the change. And it sounds like for you, the pain was so high and the discontentment and the physical, emotional and mental well-being that was being sacrificed just became too much and you needed needed to make the change. And I think sometimes, especially in this fast paced culture that we live in as moms and entrepreneurs and all of that, we don't slow down long enough to really get in tune with how am I doing? Like, am I really okay? Or am I just going through the motions, right? Am I just yeah. pushing through for the sake of pushing through? Cause I'm supposed to be this strong superwoman. But when you really get quiet and you really sit down, like you said, with a journal and really think through, like, am I where I'm supposed to be? Is this, you know, does it mean you're going to leave it all? You know, yeah. I mean, you can just take one step and just see what, what could be right. 
what is what is something that would help you move forward? So I love that. So I know that you um, really help with visibility and, you know, help people with sales as a business coach and being with the clients that I'm with, especially as women, like the word sales and seller just sounds like people have a right. They have an image that popped like someone yeah. right now is listening and they're going, oh my gosh, she's, the, you know, this lazy car salesman. <laughs> and I don't want to be that. And I don't know if you find this, but I do think for a lot of the population, it's harder for women than men to do this or the, in their mind, it feels harder yeah. um, because we're the, the nurturers. But when I think about sales now, I have a better understanding that's understanding that sales is service. Yeah, and, for sure. Right. So what are some things like when you think about sales conversations that someone's listening and maybe they just got into sales or maybe they've been in it for a long time and they just cannot bust through a barrier in their own head about what sales is and how to have true authentic sales conversations with people. What would you say to them? Hey friend, can I give you permission today? Like for real, your own permission slip permission to get clear, to cut out the noise mostly the noise that is going on around in your own mind, in your own head. It's just swirling. And you're asking yourself questions like, why am I stuck? Why am I frustrated? Why am I not making progress on my goals? I want to invite you to a free clarity call with me where we're going to dive in and we're going to identify what are the three main issues that are keeping you stuck? Number two, what are the mindsets around those issues that are actually keeping you from solving for those issues. It's not our skill sets. It's our mindsets that keep us stuck and hold us back. And then number three, identifying what are your next steps? We all have a next step and we have hundred percent responsibility for those next steps. Your only next step right now is to go to the show notes and book your free clarity call so that we can work through this. I'm believing in you and I cannot wait to see you on our clarity call. We would say, think about all the positive experiences that you've had in sales. So many times we are so quick to jump to the negative, like that car car salesman who is like pushy, pushy, pushy and wants you to buy that car. But you've bought other things besides cars in the past, right? Like (laughs) we all bought, um, we've all bought detergent for our washing machine. We've all bought um, soap, right? We've all bought all these different things or even more practical services. How many times, especially if you are homeowner has something happened in your house and you hired someone that that's a sales process. You may not have felt it, but you still gave your money, whether that was cash, a credit card, a check, whatever that was for the repair, right? You have a lawn person come out and you love them. There was a sales process that happened. So I think you need to switch your focus from the negative of, Ooh, sales is icky to wait a second. I've had way more great sales encounters Mm, in my entire life than I have had negative sales encounters in my entire life. And that's just really realistic. I don't, I'm not really hundred percent sure where women come up with the idea that sales (laughs) has to be the sales person (laughs) kind of feel like I have to be pushy. I don't really know where that comes from. I have never um, experienced that. To me, what how I view sales and what I teach my clients is very similar to what you said. Sales is a really a transaction of love. It is like I I believe in love-based sales, which means that you are not directly cold pitching people or pushing your offers onto people. You are allowing someone to say, hey, I want to buy from you and allowing them to be empowered to make that decision. And so for me, when we think about love-based sales, this really encompasses um, getting to know your audience, getting to know the people around you, really making sure that you are selling something that's going to benefit the other person, right? Not just like someone messages you and says, hey, I want to work with you. And you're like, it's link to pay, right? Because right. that can happen too. And then we're not acting out of love. We are acting out of us wanting more money, whether that's to pay our bills or take our kids summers to next month, right? Take our kids to um, some amusement park, whatever that looks like. And I just want to challenge you to really love the other person on the other side, Mm. to really go in it from a place of, 
I can help you with X, Y, and Z. And I know it because this is the service that I offer, or this is the product that I sell. And when we really look at it from that lens, but we look at it from a lens of servitude, we are here to serve you. Well, to me, and I get so excited over this, but serving somebody else is love. Mm -hmm. When you can say, hey, let me help you. That is the highest form of love on this entire earth. And that translates into sales when we're like, okay, I know I can help you. Here's my offer. If you want it, great. If you don't want it, that's also okay. It's not a serious situation. It's no pressure. I'm here to help you. I'm here Mm -hmm. to help you with this area. Another thing I see with women, especially, is that they don't want to charge high prices because they feel like that isn't acting in love. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. But I just want to say too, charge whatever price you want. If it helps the other person, and they are going to benefit from it, then it really doesn't matter at the end of the day what the price is that you put it at because you're still acting out of love. And their love back to you, your Mm -hmm. love to them is the service that you provide and their love back to you is paying you for that service. And so truthfully, it's all one big transaction of servitude. And yeah, that's just how I like to look at it. Yeah, and I think that's so beautiful. And I think, um, someone's like mind is being blown right now. Just hearing you, you say it's like a transference of of love, you know, and of service to to one another. And I think part of the problem I know for me, um, you know, I've been in sales for seventeen years, but me, I had to get to a place where I had a coach say to me one time, you know, I said I I, I love giving, you know, I'll do these free workshops and I'll do, and as soon as I get to like the sales portion where I have to make the offer, like my body language changes, my voice changes, like everything changes. Yeah. I'm like, what is it? What is wrong with me? You know? And he looked me dead in the eye and I'll never forget this. He said, you don't really believe in what you're offering. Wow. That's so powerful. And I was like, well, yeah. And then I got defensive. I'm like, well, yeah, I do. And he was like, no, if you truly believe that what you had to offer was going to help someone you wouldn't, why would you not share that with someone? Yeah. Why would you not want to sell that to everyone? (laughs) Exactly. I think when you hide it from someone, you're really not allowing yourself to love them. In fact, I think in this may be extreme, but I honestly believe that if you hide what you offer from the world, that you were just saying that you either hate your offer or you hate the person on the other side of the transaction. Because if you really love the person on the other side of the transaction, you would want to serve them Mm -hmm. and you would want to pitch your offer and you would want to boldly speak out about what it is that you have. But when we hide things from other people who could benefit from it, we are literally showing hate. And I, Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how else to frame that. (laughs) And again, like I said, that may be an extreme view of it, but I'm a very like black and white person. You're Mm -hmm. you're either going to love people or you're not going to love people. And that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for someone who's listening, like that, maybe that's the work that you need to do is to love your offer and like, do that inner work and like, pick it apart. Like, what don't you love about it? What do you not believe about it? Do you need to do something to, to build up your own belief? Because if you're not talking about it, there's something, there's a blocker there, either in your belief of the product or your belief of your transformation or your belief about your client and are they going to buy it or are they going to love it? Are they going to hate it? People pleasing, you know, all of the approval things that are on there. But I I just love this conversation about, you know, seeing sales from that standpoint. I think there are going to be a lot of women that are, that are freed up from that. So I know you, you've experienced this just so much change, right. in in the market, I mean, I feel like, you know, when I was building, so my background is in direct selling. So I was in direct sales for 16 Mm. years and like, we were like the home party people. Right. And now it's like, you don't hear about that too much and Mm -hmm. I'm not in direct sales anymore, but how people consume content how people buy content, how people like the process and everything just seems to be constantly changing, especially with social media. So what are you seeing right now, as far as like a simple marketing strategy with all of the changes and maybe there's not one simple way, but I would just love to know your thoughts on what you're seeing in the market and what's, what's changing and what's, what's good. And what, how do we need to make some adjustments? There's so much changing right now, especially with like social media and all the algorithms and way too many people are just building their businesses straight from social media and they're not moving past 
social media, which does become a problem, right? Especially when things change. I know recently Instagram's algorithm changed um, and Instagram is implementing like a pay to play kind of. I saw that. Yeah. Subscription. Yeah. And um, that has really been hurting engagement for a lot of people. I mean, even for me, content that typically would get at least 30 likes or, you know, even more 30 minimum is now getting like two or three or yesterday's post that I put out only got eight likes. And so we really have to move away from putting all of our eggs into one basket Mm -hmm. and diversifying. So what I like to tell people is I, my formulated system is what I call MVMS. And what that stands for is number one is mindset. Like we were just discussing, do you believe in your offer? Do you believe in the transformation? Do you believe this is really going to help someone? And if you don't believe it, we need to rework that part before you go on to sales because without it, there's no sales that's happening, right? And so we really, I really focus in on mindset. I'm not a mindset coach. I primarily handle, I do a lot of sales coaching, um, but I do talk about mindset because I do think it's relevant. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's visibility. How are you getting your brand visible in this world? There are so many ways to get visible. And I tell people like you, you have to make this a priority. And so a couple of ways that one could get visible is you could be a guest on a podcast, which is ironic because that's what I'm doing right now. (laughs) Um, But podcasts are awesome. And most podcasts have an average listener of a thousand people per episode. So imagine thousand people who are probably around your ideal client range. If you are on the right podcast, you know where you apply to, who can just listen to your voice and say, Hey, you know what? I want to follow this person. I want to connect with this person further. Right. So podcasts are great. Um, another thing that I like that I haven't seen so much of is going live with someone else. So LinkedIn has a live feature, Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok has live, right? Um, I wouldn't put any eggs in TikTok right now though. No. (laughs) But, you know, there's so many platforms where you can go live. The key, though, is not to go live by yourself. It's to go live with someone else, someone who has the same audience type as you, right? They're, they have the same ideal client, but they do something very, very different from you. This is really going to allow both of your audiences to be exposed to each other. So now you're not just winning, but the other person, remember, I, te- I teach all about love. So it's like love-based interactions. How can every party win from this situation, yeah. right? And so going live with someone else, um, being a guest on a blog. Blogs are also really great. I mean, how many times do we Google like hair salons by me and a website pulls up and it has all this information or how do I do this? And you're seeing these blogs. A lot of bloggers in 2024, especially if they've had their blog for a long time, they don't want to write all of their blogs. So they bring in people who can do guest blogging. There are so many ways, but you need to be getting visible, right? Networking. I love networking. Um, Networking calls are great. Networking in-person events are wonderful, right? Get in the room, talk to other people. And so really get visible. And then from your visibility, is my next M, which is your marketing. I like to call this nurturing really, because Mm -hmm. you want to take the traffic from wherever it is that you're getting visible. You want to make sure that you tell people where to connect with you after you've gotten visible. You want to take that traffic and you want to send it to source, maybe multiple sources. Maybe a source is your freebie. Maybe another source is your Instagram. And then another one is LinkedIn. Send them to multiple sources and really make sure that these are places where you're going to speak to them, that you're really nurturing them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And creating content that speaks to their pain points, it speaks to their desires. I can, I mean, that's a whole nother lesson we can really dive (laughs) deep into, but um, content that speaks to their objections that they may or may not have and how to overcome these things um, and how why your product or your offer is best for them based off of what what they're experiencing, right? And then from there, we have sales. Um, And that's the last part, which is the sales. And sales can happen anywhere. It can happen, if we're speaking Instagram, it can happen in the DMs. My sales primarily comes from my Instagram stories. In fact, 100% of my clients all found me from Instagram stories, and that's how they've become my clients. Um, Other For other people, this may look like directly 
talking about your offer on LinkedIn or in Facebook Mm -hmm. groups or whatever that looks like. But this is really where the selling comes in. And so you have to have a system. You have to make sure that your mindset's great. You have to know where you're getting visible. And I do not recommend getting visible on all the places because you're going to burn yourself out. Find one or two ways to start getting visible and really just drive traffic to your main pages and then go from there and grow from there. Um, And so that's what I would tell people. That is my, that's my overall system. Yeah, I love that. And I I do think sometimes we just kind of get into this bubble of thought that like, if we're not killing it on social media, there's no other way, you know, to, to find clients. And just recently I took, I've never taken a break from social. I've been on social for Mm -hmm. a long, long time. And I'm like, I've seen people do it. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Um, so I just, you know, I've almost been off social for two months and I, have done so much better in my business, just thinking outside Mm. of the box with, you know, offering like free workshops and just going deeper with the audience that I have on my email list and referrals. So like my current clients, like letting people know, Hey, she's having this workshop. And so getting people, you know, into the funnel that way too. And I just think sometimes we get this tunnel vision because we think, well, I can just post uh, one post and I'm going to get all these clients, but that might not be the right way for you. It is a way. Yeah. Right. But I mean, you know, and I know like people like the percentage of people are actually seeing your stuff. That's where the burnout comes in because you feel like you have to just constantly keep posting and doing all these things. And the fact is, there's so many ways to do business. There's so many ways to get visibility. And, you you know, you definitely shared some of those with with the podcast. And, you know, you just got to pick the one. Right. right. Like you said, don't try yeah. to be the master of the jack of all trades and the master of none because you're spreading right. yourself so thin. So what would you say to really help someone identify like, what are those main tasks, right? To kind of move the needle in their business. It could be from a yeah. marketing standpoint, a visibility standpoint, like is, as a mom, right. And an entrepreneur, when you're trying to take care of the kids and you have the mom role and then you have the wife role, and then you have this entrepreneur role, like it's really hard to prioritize like what really matters with the little bit of time maybe she has to focus yeah. on her business. Of course, I think, you know, you really have to figure out going back to my system of MVMS. First of all, where do you want to get visible, right? And how often are you going to get visible? This is really where crafting a strategy comes into play. Um, For me, specifically, my visibility strategy is podcasts. And so I recently started my own podcast, but I go on a podcast at least twice a week. So, I mean, that's kind of a big deal, right? And so you have to figure out what makes the most sense for you and for your business and how often you want to get visible. And then from there, I would say, if you are looking at your content or you're looking at marketing in general, which by the way, there are other ways to, um, I need to dive back a little. (laughs) There are other (laughs) ways that you can make sales besides social media. Um, I know we didn't really talk about this too much, but I actually talked about this yesterday on my own podcast. And what I discussed was there are out of box ways to make sales, right? And so this could look like, I gave the example of one of my clients, she's a bookkeeper and she works with six figure social media management and marketing agencies. That's who her ideal clients are. And so for her, um, I told her, Hey, I think it would be great if you sent out gifts to local agencies in your area, like nice gifts, like in a really nice box. Maybe it's like a water bottle and a notebook and a pen. They have no idea who you are. Just send them a gift in the mail and put a handwritten note. Nobody is sending out handwritten notes these days, right? So like, this is different. This is unique. This is how we're going to drive views to your business. And she's a mom too. She is a. She also has a two and a half year old son and she's very busy. There's no way that she could spend all of her time on social media, responding to all the messages, talking to all the people, creating the just right content, but we still have to grow our businesses. And this probably will take you, you know, a couple hours here and there throughout a one week total to send out some packages with a handwritten letter that just says, Hey, my name is blank. This is my business. I just wanted to know if you would love to connect. Like, uh, she's not cold pitching them. She's just saying, this is who I am. I wanted to introduce myself and I would love to know if you want to get on a call with me. So you really have to think sometimes as moms, we have to think outside of the box. Mm-hmm. How can we make sales without a 
directly cold pitching that copy paste thing, right? Because yeah. I believe cold pitching can work if it's meaningful. If you are sending a message because you have known this person slightly and you have a really good intention behind it, there's some ways that that can work. Right. Um, but I do think like things like handwritten letters are so underutilized. Um, people love personalization. They're they're gonna want to connect with her. Yeah. Um, and so figuring kind of out what makes sense for you and for your schedule. Like I know for me, I only have my son's nap to get work done. Mm. And so if he's not napping, um, I'm not working. <laughs> right? like, I don't know how else to say that. Um, so it's just like I have a few hours. I'm so grateful that even at two and a half years old, he takes three hour naps. So I have three hours every day where I can be intentional and I wake up earlier than he does. And I typically will give myself an extra hour in the morning to get some other things done in my business. So every morning from 6 30 to 7 30 in the morning, I'm in my business and I'm working on the back ends and all the things that need to get done. And that has worked for me. And so I would say if you are working in pockets of your time, figure out if you can either wake up earlier than your children or stay up later than your children. And if you can't do either of those and you just have nap times or times that they're in school to get things done, then my other suggestion for you would be to think outside of the box. Do not rely 100% on social media. It's great. It's wonderful, but it is not a necessary tool in 2024. Yeah. I love that. It's almost like we're coming full circle. Like you think about like back in the day, like you used to get mailers, right? With promotion. And we still get some of those things, but like not nearly Mm -hmm. as much. Everything has gone so digital that when people actually receive something in the mail, that's not a bill, right? It's like, oh my gosh, this is so nice. And even if they, it's not for them or like, it's not a fit for them, then they're going to remember you number one. And they're going to refer you probably to someone else. Like, Hey, you know, it's just going to keep you top of mind. So I, I love this idea and I'm sitting here thinking about, oh, I need, I need to do this um, <laughs> in my own business. Cause I love, I love adding personal touches to things. And I know when mm. I receive things like that, it does make me stop and just be like, whoa, right. okay, gosh, how long has it been since I've received, like, I used to call it happy mail when I was in uh, direct sales, like to send things to my team or customers, like right. I would send them happy mail. Like when's the last time you've received happy mail? Exactly. And so that's just a great, a great way to do that. And yes, it may be a little bit of work and money up front, but it's freeing up your time because it's like a one week campaign that you're doing to put out there. Yeah. So so yeah, I love that. I love that. So tell me what you're most excited about right now in your business or life. Yeah. I just relaunched my, um, networking calls. I love networking. I love meeting people. I love connecting with other business owners and I'm really excited about it because last time I had my networking calls, we had 200 people registered for them, nice. which is amazing. Um, and so I'm just excited to see what comes out of this next. And yeah, that is kind of like my my baby. I, I stopped it for a while because we were in the middle of um, adopting a child. And we just found out that it may take two years for this child to come home to us. Wow. Um, so it's, it's a long process. It is such a long process, but, um, I was, I thought that this child would come home to us a lot sooner. And so I was preparing to take maternity leave and all of the things so I can like really adjust to becoming a mom of two instead of a mom of just a one child. Um, but that didn't happen. So networking calls are back and I'm really, I'm just looking forward to all the awesome people that I get to meet and that will be joining us. I love that. So for yeah. those who want to connect with you and learn about what you do and how, what you do to help people or just hang out with you on social somewhere, where can they find you? Yeah, I am on Instagram and LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I do like LinkedIn a lot. It's it's so much <laughs> easier, um, but you can definitely connect with me on either one of those platforms. And my name is just Sienna Kobishki on both. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, I know we're going to put links to everything um, in the show notes for everyone. If you had one kind of final message to a mompreneur right now, who's listening to the podcast, what would you want her to know? I would say 
if your business doesn't seem to be moving as fast or as quickly as other women who don't have kids businesses are moving, or even other moms who are in a different season of life, maybe their kids are off to college or their kids are in high school. It's so much different, right? Than if you have toddlers or a brand new baby at home. Mm -hmm. So regardless of where you are in your season of motherhood, give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. Your business may not look the way that it is quote unquote supposed to, but just remember that this isn't a race. You don't need to make fast money. Fast money usually quickly dwindles away. Um, so build a sustainable business and build one that is built around your lifestyle rather than building your life around the business, right? Like I, I only work when my son's napping. Um, otherwise, I would become extremely stressed out trying to do both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be too yeah. much. So my advice is really understand the season of life that you're in don't compare yourself to others and remember that this isn't a race. Yeah. I love that. What a great way to end the podcast. Well, thank you again so much for coming on to the show. I know people are going to take away a lot of value from this and, um, Maybe I'll join one of your networking calls. That sounds super fun. Yeah, you should come. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap, friends. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I really hope it met you right where you are and gave you some encouragement for your day. Could you do me the biggest favor and leave me a rating and review? Seriously, it's the best way for you to support the show. And while you're there, be sure to follow the show so you never miss an episode. Thanks again. And until next time, I am believing in you always.